Welcome to DMOP Garage. We are back on the 52 Barn Door Ambulance. And in the last episode, we were painting the underneath of this thing. You can have a look under there. She's all painted in the factory gray color. And of course, uh, links in the description if you want to watch that episode, I'll put it down below. Now, in today's episode, we are going to continue. We've got the front beam. That's all been fully restored. We're going to get that in. And then we're going to move on to other componentry that we need to start adding to this bus. So we've got brake lines, we've got cables, we've got all kinds of stuff that we've got to do. Then we can get the gearbox, get that mounted as well. So yeah, exciting stuff. Hang around if you want to watch that sort of thing and let's go. Right, hey, let's lower this bus down. I think I've got it reasonably where it needs to go. Let's uh, find out. And we're good. Righto, here she is, all mounted and how good does that look, huh? <laughs> It's definitely got a weird concept, the fact that, you know, it bolts to here and then uh, you've got the two big ones up. Yeah, very strange. Anyway, at least that part's done. We can start adding some more componentry, obviously. The spindles can go on. We've got to put the uh, ducting uh, through to the pipe here. And, of course, some cables. And I think, actually, I need to get the shift rod put in as well before we go for the gearbox, so... Yeah, we'll just continue here. I'll get, oh, shocks can go on too. Let's grab some more parts. Okay, we've got our beautiful shocks, which were, these were the original ones that were on there. They're, and they've, you know, they've even got the original logo uh, from back in the day, which is pretty cool. And they work perfect too. So I've just greased up the rods that they're gonna be sitting on. And let's install these guys. Get you out of the way. Clip there and get a spanner quickly. Tap the little tappies down. Okay, we've got our spindles ready to go. We've got our bolts lined up. We've got our new bearings, needle bearings. We're gonna pack those with grease right now. Look, just drop them in like so. Messy job, but someone's gotta do it, as you know. I'm gonna make sure that these get completely coated inside and out. Pop him in there. Like that. Generous coating on these guys. And now what we have to do is work out our shims. <laughs> and that means I've got to take my gloves off because, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Because I've forgotten. I've forgotten. I wrote it down somewhere. And, yeah, I'll have to go back through the footage. Just hang on a second. Now, unfortunately... The set of brand new shims that came from BBT don't fit. Uh, again, aftermarket uh, tolerances just aren't there. So the problem is, if BBT are actually listening, their pins that they supply, uh, the, the shims that they give you will not go inside here. You can see they sit on the outside. They don't actually fit inside. And of course, if you look at the diameters, you can see there, they're wrong. So, you know, 
We all, we all talk about it, don't we, about the aftermarket mark. You know, they just need to sort this out. I've got a feeling it's probably because these 52 spindles are possibly different to the later ones. So the shim sizes are probably different. But anyway, I'm just using all the old shims you can see here. And we're all good. So we've got our shim numbers worked out. We can go and get this uh, installed in the bus. Okay, we have our shims installed and we should be able to just press these in theoretically like so they look okay they get you back up in its spot nothing on the front these actually don't have uh caps on them i think because they're so early but i think they do run a rubber seal on the back side here i reckon they do okay i'll go and grab those and here we go with this side and that's spindle is on tie rods are on i think i'll just black this part out here so we don't see any logos uh, i've got a couple of new uh, rubber bump stops to mount on there too and everything is tight and that's what we want tightness is goodness so one more part done same deal all good on this side too i've got some tie wire to put on the bolts here as well and yeah job done all right let's keep moving on to some other bits and pieces so one of the next things i've done is just put the dampener shock absorber weirdo arm thingos in position <laughs> so there's the left and the right so they're done and what i'm doing now is just cleaning up the shift rod the main body rod here it had a a fair bit of surface rust on it so i've just sanded it back and put a bit of phosphoric acid on it we'll just let it do its thing then we can paint it black and get that installed this needs to go in soon before we can start putting the gearbox in so we'll just let let it do its thing then we can paint it black quickly okay we have the backing plates i've just uh i haven't tightened these up yet we're going to put some tie wire around those We've got a backing plate either side. We've still got to get the brake off to the brake specialist to get those done. I'll probably take them in next week. And we've got new brake lines and brake hoses. So that's they're all flared. I don't actually have to do any brake flaring on this lot. They're all cut to size and flared, which is fantastic. So what we need to do before we can install all the brake hardware is we've got to clean it all because it's up here and it's extremely rusty. As you can see, as you know, I am not letting it fly like this because that is gross. So all these parts, I mean, <laughs> so I've got some new rubber. Some of these are actually good. I mean, look at those. You could probably reuse these ones. Some of them are a bit cactus, but I've got some new ones anyway as well. Okay, well, let's uh, dunk those into a solution and clean them up. Okay, so I've just taken, I had some auto thinners in the bucket put all that in there and just swirled it around for a while i was going to fire up the ultrasonic cleaner but i have not had water in it and this will do now that they've just got that little coating of surface rust on them what we're going to do now is dunk them back in here and we're going to put a little bit of phosphoric acid in there which will neutralize that surface rust and then we can epoxy paint all these suckers black uh, this one here came up nearly nice that was just straight out of the auto thinners but that won't need to get put so Rain-X that's what we're using we'll just put a little bit of that in there won't have to leave it in very long probably 20 minutes something like that all right come back in about 20 minutes and check it out Okay, so we've got the nuts and bolts out of the solution, out of the uh, phosphoric acid. You can see it just completely strips all the, the rust. Uh, we'll let those dry, then we can give them some black epoxy and they're ready to get assembled. Uh, what we're going to do now is just tie wire using the tie wire pliers. And if you haven't seen this thing in action, they're bloody fantastic. We've got a couple of bolts that we have to tie down, so we'll go and do that right now. Now we want to do here we're going to clamp 
the two wires. I'm gonna do it right here. There we go, that's better. Just turn them. Get out tie wire over the top of that bolt, like so, just like that. And we just want to do another and that's and then the rest of it we can. Just loop it. And you want to keep that nice and tight against the bolt, like that. So now we can release it. And then the next one, we can actually thread it through now. So we're probably going to have to cut it. Yeah, might be able to just chop it down there. I reckon if we go. Not sure exactly how much we're going to need, but we'll got to go through that one and then around to that one. Well, we might actually do that to there. Oh yeah, we should be able to. I'll just chop it here. I need extra. I need extra. Not no big deal. So now what we do is we thread. Turn this bolt a bit. Thread these two guys back through the holes, like that. Same thing again, we're going to add the tie wire, or add the clamper, just in front of the bolt, which is about there. And there we have it guys, a little bit of black paint over the tie wire and <laughs> she's all good to go. So we've taken the brakes down to the specialist and I'll just show you something that I've got to do here. He actually needs the new bearing races to be put in here so that he can spin the front drums and clean up the surfaces on the inside. So I have to remove these old races now <laughs> the normal way you do it is you just get a, a punch come in on the inside where the lip is here and punch the races out except there's no lip so when there's no lip i was sitting there scratching my head thinking well how the hell am i going to punch this race out the back one no problem that has a lip so you can knock that out no worries but the front one uh, I was scratching my head. What I was going to do is get the die grinder or the, uh, the the Dremel and just put a little cut here and then whack it with a cold chisel because it's hard and still it'll crack it and then you can just knock it out. But Steve 
up at Das Resto over there, he came up with a better idea. He said, just get yourself a MIG welder and run a beta weld around the race and it will shrink it and it'll just fall out. So we're gonna do that right now. Let's set up the welder. Let's see if that's enough, if we can knock it out. It's not falling out, but hopefully it'll just knock it when I do this. Woo, that worked a treat. Okay, let's get the other one in. All right. We can take these guys down to the brake guy. Put the new racers in, of course, and go from there. That is a great little tip. There you go. Thanks, Steve, for that one. Um, righto, guys, that's going to do this episode. We will catch you in the next one where we're going to continue get all the brakes done get the gearbox in uh we will also start working on the back here just get the spring plates on and get closer to getting this thing back on the road on the ground and then we can start on the interior we've got a lot of work to do on the interior in this thing too so awesome all right we'll catch you in the next episode guys catch you later you